And back at Lakeland University where uh, the Lacrosse Eagles lead it 44 to 32. Uh, we got the stat sheets, Chris. Uh, what stands out for you? Turnovers, Marty. Just too many turnovers for the uh, the fish. 13 turnovers in that first half is way too many, which led to a lot of easy baskets for uh, lacrosse. The fish made a nice run there at the end of the first half, but uh, then those late turnovers and a little bit of a spark plug uh, off the bench there by McCray, and uh, you got a couple steals and baskets, and now all of a sudden you're down by 12, and it's never a good thing when the home team comes out of the uh, you know, locker room with about a minute left. That means you, there was a lot of discussion in the locker room. <laughs> it reminds me back when Indiana won their national championship in 87, I believe it was, and uh, they didn't, uh, UNM LV almost didn't get out in time to start the second half. <laughs> they didn't get any warm ups actually that time. But anyway, uh, free throws were uh, 11 for 15 for uh, lacrosse, uh, way too many. Uh, Lakeland made seven out of ten. You know that was enough free throws, I guess, but uh, way too much fouling. Yeah, there was a lot of half. fouls, and uh, Marty, of course, let the officials have it as they walked out. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, we're getting ready now, and we're starting second half action. Cross gets the ball out of bounds. They control the first half tip off, but there was one tie up in that first half. And a strong drive to the basket and a score by uh, Sam Skoyan well, for uh, that, lacrosse. That's the same type of thing that was happening at the beginning of the game. Lacrosse got two easy baskets, and then when they didn't have drive penetration, they could dump down to uh, wing players that are crashing. Jump shot in the middle of the lane by uh, McNeil did not go down. McNeil starting the second half, Marty. Yeah, he had a good, uh, a good run at it in the first half. It's deserving. Oh man, what a catch and a shot is in by Austin Fritz. And uh, now it's getting up there a little bit, Marty. 16 points. Yeah, they got to score a basket. Almost a turnover that time by uh, Chris Kavich. And a two point shot is up and in by uh, Nygaard. Obviously, halftime wasn't enough for for Lakeland, as they call a quick 30-second timeout here, Marty. Wow, wonder what went wrong. Especially after you're scored. I know. Makes you wonder what's going on. Uh, I think it's the defensive end, Marty. Um, the cross is just, they just look a little smoother. And uh, like I said, they drive penetrate, and then they, they kick it out, and they seem to get easy baskets. And, I'm not sure what the uh, enrollment is out here at Lakeland. I would imagine it's uh, got to be close to a thousand, maybe a little over, uh, when you include the uh, you know other types of classes, adult classes, night classes, and things. But Lacrosse has a, a student body that ranks over 5,000 kids, so a lot to choose from, and uh, can be hard sometimes for smaller schools like uh, a Lakeland to uh, compete with the uh, schools in the WS, WSCS, right, Chris? Nope, now they're in the WIAC. The WIAC, W-I-A-C. And uh, one thing we, well, we'll, we'll save my little thought here for a minute. McDonald picks up his second foul. Nice pass. Uh, good power move that time by uh, Schradel, and he puts it up and in. And you can just see the strength sometimes by the uh, cross players as well. They just have a quick knack to the ball. Defending conference champs. First time since 1965 that lacrosse has won a basketball championship. Uh, good hands that time by... Uh, mine holes but he wasn't able to come up with it but now he does and there was actually a travel I think Chris but they didn't call it and you get a foul on Lakeland good speed thrown there yeah looked like one too many steps but it might have been a result of the fall too Nygaard uh, picked up the fall for Lakeland 
his second. Free throws in by Meinholz. Yep, you come out at halftime, we get all fired up, ready to go, have our long speech in there, and then you get outscored right away. Yep. Eight to two to get started in the first two minutes. It could have been worse. Uh, lacrosse was not that great on their free throw shooting. That 2-4-2 two two trip will uh, help bring up the percentage. Chris mentioned they uh, shot over 74% as a team last year. McNeil went to the left side but couldn't use the left hand to get the shot off and uh, was a little off balance on the shot attempt. Good rotation. Three ball is up and in by Skoyan. Wow. Yeah, they're lighting it up now. 21 point lead by uh, the Eagles. And just like that, Lakeland uh, is in a big hole. It's a full timeout, Scott. We'll take a timeout and be right back. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it. Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Hey, they're getting into it now. They should have been into it earlier in the game, though, Chris. They're down by 21. Yep. We got it rocking. Whoa. Slow start for the Muskies here. And as we have a minute here, Marty, best of luck to uh, Lakeland as they've made the Division Three football playoffs for a second consecutive year. The good news is you made the playoffs. The bad news is you play number one ranked UW Whitewater. Oops. Down there. Yeah. But again, my congratulations to Lakeland. And you know, they, I was at the game when they lost, Marty. <laughs> and uh, they needed some help along the way, but uh, Took care of business. It was uh, a very entertaining game champs. when uh, we were here on that rainy day. <laughs> a little trouble reading the numbers at the <laughs> end, but. Uh, yeah, three uh, three Wisconsin uh, schools besides Lake and Amato. You got. See, Oscar. Mount Union lost too, broke yep. their uh, all time uh, yep. winning streak during the regular season. Oshkosh, Platteville, Whitewater. That's really unheard of of one conference to get three teams. Oh, really? Three ball attempt is no good by Schradel. Meinholz, pardon me, and uh, we get a, not a very smart fall that time. Schradel does pick up that fall. Just under 17 minutes. And Lakeland's been outscored 11 to two to start this second half. Oof. The three ball helped quite a bit for uh, the Eagles. And ticky tack. Ball being called on uh, Fritz. That'll be his third. Well, Brandon James, 16 points in the first half, has yet to shoot one here in the second half. Well, I'm sure he was part of the discussion in the uh, lacrosse locker room at halftime. Sean Wheeler back in the ball game. He had a nice run at it in the uh, first half. McDonald with a three ball, couldn't get it to go. Ball is tipped away. Coming away is uh, with the ball was Soiken. Oh, a good step through and a lay in by uh, Ben Meinholz. Yeah, lacrosse five of six. Just like they started the game. McNeil with 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Threw one up and it didn't go in. Nice. Uh, there's somebody at the table already. Shot is blocked and then uh, 
Picking up the foul is going to be uh, number 23, Joshua McNeil. And uh, for McNeil, that's his third, Chris. Well, he got rewarded with the start in the second half, but didn't really play up to par as, as he did in that first half. Well, you're right there. And the maroon shirts been spending a lot of time on the black stripe. McNeil and uh, Chris Kavich both checking out. As we suspected, a quick shot. Got McNeil to the bench. Couple more free throws. It's 59 to 34. 25 point lead by uh, Lacrosse. Bit of a walk, not called, and the ball is tipped away, but uh, Lakeland keeps it. Shot clock rolling down, 10 seconds left. A lot of dribbling, Chris. Oh, but putting it up and in was Deontay Carlton. Boy, he. That was a dandy. He was such a player in high school, just to see him as a freshman. And it's just. Realize that guys are just a little bit bigger. Carlton's got a tough matchup and going right around him, but having it blocked oh. by uh, service. Oh, he got hurt. Zach Schradel was down, and then I think uh, somebody may have kicked him by accident. One of his own teammates, actually. He's up now. That was a, oh, I don't know. Tough break for uh, service. Jacob uh, doing the good hustle job, but uh, wound up being called for the foul. It's only a second foul, though, so he's okay in that respect. Well. Scott Maloff, our director, said start putting a hex on him. Lacrosse has made five in a row, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> See if it works. Well, they're 11 of 15 in that first half. That's pretty good. Yeah. 73%. You better get in practice. Get High school season's right around the corner. Closer to 80% now. Yeah, oh, for sure. I did have him 11 for 16. Uh, the official stat guy had him 11 for 15. Finally. McDonald with a nice jump shot over pressure. 61-38. Oh, <laughs> good step through, tip up is no good. And Lakeland, oh, great hustle. It's a scrum. Wow. Neither one giving any quarter. Watch this action, fans. Rah! Right on his head now. No, you don't. Why isn't that a foul? He landed right on his head. It's okay to be hustling for the ball, but you got to go for the ball. But you just can't jump on a pile and land on him. Shouldn't yes, you can. Just don't pull him off the pile. Shouldn't have <laughs> a foul on the cross. It was a tie-up. That's how the officials saw it. So, Mr. Wright, you're right and wrong. Oh, boy. Ball goes inside, and then it's stolen away, but we get a foul called. I think that's going to go on Schradel. Schradel said he never touched him. And maybe he didn't. Pretty adamant about not getting that foul, but I don't think his. Actually, input. they called it on mine holes, Chris. What? Yeah. No, no, they got 23. Oh, yeah. What the heck? McDonald tried to feed it in, but the ball was tipped away. Picking it up and making a three attempt for Lakeland was uh, Carlos Campos, but he couldn't get it to go, and then Lacrosse got it back. Three ball attempt is no good by uh, Tanner Brooks. 
And uh, we're going to get a foul on lacrosse. Campos will be going to the line. He was two for two in the first half. See if we can keep that going. Check that. Pat McDonald going to the line. The Pirate. Fort Washington Pirate. They've uh, turned out some good basketball players over the years, not just uh, Gosser. There's, there's been some other kids that have come out of there and had success the next level. Just can't name any of them. I'm sure you can, Chris. <laughs> Mine's thinking. <laughs> the wheels are spinning. <laughs> Thirteen fifty left in the ball game. Lacrosse up by twenty-one. Wheeler forcing the action. Ball happens before the shot. That's tough, Chris. You know he's. Boy, if that goes on McNeil, that's his fourth. Yeah, it is. And uh, Nygaard coming back in for him. I don't know, Marty. It just didn't look like great defensive positioning. Just bodying himself Again, instead of sliding and using, you know, your yeah. chest. He did more leaning. Wheeler forcing the action. Oh. Chris Kavich got the steal but was a little too quick and uh, went out of bounds. Couldn't complete the defensive play. Oh, boy. Trying to... Dribble through a double team just doesn't work. Just gave it for the score. His first points of the night. And uh, Lakeland calling a timeout as the uh, lead that was up to 24, I believe, is down to 19. 30-second timeout. Our uh, next game is going to be on November 22nd, Chris. That's uh, next Tuesday when MSOE comes to Lakeland. So we'll be able to see the Muskie varsity one more time. And then on Monday, December 5th, we come back out here, but that's for a JV game. They host uh, UW Sheboygan and what should be an interesting matchup. And I think uh, with uh, Kaminsky being a freshman, you'd think he'd probably be playing with the uh, JVs also. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. But uh, we look forward to bringing you those uh, two college games. And then uh, starting December 9th through the rest of the season, we have uh, all high school action. So our next game will be uh, November 22nd out here at Lakeland College. And the girls have already started playing, I know. Ball goes off the rim. Campos with a three ball, nails it. In rhythm. 16 point lead now. Lakeland starting to uh, chisel into that uh, lacrosse lead. Kick out pass, Wheeler's shot from outside the line is no good. And Chris Kavich comes away with the rebound. Oh, service not expecting that pass. Goes off his shoulder. Hey, just the second turnover I have for the Muskies here. They've cleaned it up quite a bit and uh, actually the last few minutes their defense has been uh, quite good. That should be off of the lacrosse player, but they're saying no. Grzgevich got the ball, knocked it out of the hands of the lacrosse player, but uh, they couldn't get the call. Looks like, even on the replay, it looked like it went off of uh, Wheeler. Oh, good play, good deep. Oh, Chris Kavich is going to get called for the foul, but uh, 
They switched on the defense and got in pretty good position. It's unfortunate they picked up the foul. And uh, where would lacrosse be but at the free throw line? Yeah, really. How many free throws they got in this half? Seven, eight? Two, four, six, seven for seven. Well, yeah, they, eight for eight. they oh. attack. Yeah. They, they get to create those opportunities. I got a feeling their team free throw shooting is above 74% with that eight for eight here in the second half. Oh, Kruskevich cutting down the lane hard. Got a great pass from his teammate McDonald, but uh, couldn't get it to go, but he did draw the foul. That was pretty sweet, Chris. Manning picked up the foul. <laughs> Talvish McCray is back in the ball game for uh, Lakeland. He was a spark plug in that first half. Three attempt is no good. Hustling in was Nygaard to get the uh, loose ball. Driving down the lane, but uh, not being able to get it up to the glass because of the defenders, and lacrosse comes away with it. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Shoe came off during the action. Watch this. That's the kind of hitting you're gonna see on Saturday. <laughs> Fans don't like it. McCray will be at the line. They're shooting 82%, Marty. Well. <laughs> that might jinx them. There, there you go. go. Oh boy. oh boy. Looks like a high dribble, but they're going to get a foul on uh, lacrosse. 14 fouls, 11 07. 63 11 left in the ball game. 40 fouls in the game, Marty. Really? <laughs> oh, man. But I think the. The pace of, free, of falling is down a little bit here in the second half till right there. <laughs> <laughs> There's your jinx, Scott. <laughs> well, there was 26 in the first half. It's 41. It's a, more than a foul a minute. That seems about right, actually. About every 45 seconds. McDonald now with uh, 10 points. Looking for number 11. Campos checks out. Brandon James back in. He's been uh, pretty si really silent so far this half. Doesn't have a point. He had 16 in the first half. Not even a shot, Marty. Not even a shot. He, he was a drive penetrator in that first half. I don't know if it's because of the six turnovers or... Good defense by service, and then he's going to get called for the foul. That actually was a pretty good call. <laughs> Got him where he wanted him, underneath yeah, the basket. Watch the drop step, Marty. Use that pivot foot. You're seeing the fans now. They've resigned themselves to the bad call, but before they were hooting and hollering. Boy, Chris, all you got to do is mention that shooting percentage, and the, they've been in a funk all of a sudden. <laughs> Two misses in a row. If that's 
the definition of a funk. They've only made nine of 11, though. <laughs> <laughs> Donald feeds it into service, fakes one way, goes the other, and then threw it away. Just a bad pass. And uh, oh my! All he well, did was dove to the to the yeah. Shot attempt by Skoyan was not a very good one. He threw it up there and then watched the player for lacrosse come through. Oh yeah, I guess he did grab him a little bit. Right. And then getting the rebound was Schradel, but he got fouled. He'll be at the line. In the ball game, Schradel has made uh, five of six free throws. Zach Schradel is a senior. He's 6'5", 220, comes from uh, Clayton. High school. He actually was at uh, UW Superior. Chris transferred over to Lacrosse, probably for the warmer weather. Really? You know, if you ever check the map, you know, like it might say 60 in Sheboygan, it's always warmer in Lacrosse. And a very beautiful campus, Marty, and a very pretty city there. Very beautiful part of the state. Yep, with the cliffs and stuff. You, you were there. River, yeah. Haven't been to lacrosse, it's well worth it. Especially in the fall. Stop at Piggies for some pork. Oh, James a little out of control, and uh, you had mentioned he had a few turnovers in the first half, and uh, actually way too many in the first game. A uh, good steal that time by McDonald. He lays it up and in. Smart decision there. Yeah, let him go. Yeah, you're up by 18 points. Don't compound one mistake with another mistake. Good swarming defense by the Muskies. Got a bounce. Yep. I thought McNeil got away with the push, actually. But we'll take it. Turnover by lacrosse. Oh, three ball are only down 13, Chris. There's over nine minutes left. Well, they got to get it under 10, Marty. Then we can start talking, talking the comeback. There we go. James, a little bit short. Went away with the rebound was Goyan. And timeout lacrosse. With 9.05 left in the ball game, the Eagles lead it by 16. We have a full timeout, Scott. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What? A sweetheart. At a boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Come on, Todd. You got some fans at Lakeland that are into the ball game, Chris, and uh, you got to like that. Okay, so you're not into it. What are you into? Well, I'm hoping that a uh, little run here, Marty. It's been a tough game of flow because of all the fouls and turnovers. That, but it's uh, so early in the year. That three ball by James would have been nice if that would have gone in. Yeah, he's just taken one shot in the second half. They're taking 10 there. Um, used their leading score at 25 points in game one. And uh, just a junior. 
Room to grow. Lakeland in general just has, I believe, three seniors. Nice pass. Paulish McCray's pass inside is uh, a very nice one, but uh, not being able to make the shot was Zach Schradel, but he gets bailed out with a foul. It looked like a good block, Chris. Yep. But a nice bounce pass into the post. I think he kind of took that for granted a little bit. Did Schradel. Oh, picking up his fifth foul was uh, Mark Kriskevich. Unfortunate for him. I'll do a little shout out to him for helping me with the pronunciation of the uh, names of his teammates and his. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching uh, Cedar Grove Belgium game against Amherst today, and unfortunately for Cedar Grove, they lost, but I'll tell you that Amherst, they had a, everything ended in a ski. Really? Yeah. Here's how you spell Mark's name. G-R-Y-S-Z-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. -E -E and he's got to put that on his papers every... Oh, man. Can you imagine when he was a third grader? <laughs> put that down. Everybody would be done with their worksheet. He'd still be <laughs> his name. <laughs> A little bit of weave action. Oh. McNeil's shot is oh, up and good, my. and he's fouled. Don't shoot it, don't shoot it, don't shoot it. Okay. I think the foul helped it go in. That could have been. It's McNeil's first uh, points of the second half. Was that a two or a three? No, it was a two-pointer. Two oh, it's only a two-pointer. But pointer. now it's a three-point play the old-fashioned so way. It's 53. I got that wrong. So it's 67-53. At the 833 mark. Rising up high for the jump shot, but not getting it in. For lacrosse was Meinholz. And uh, tip by Schradel is no good. And then we get a foul. Foul goes on McDonald. It's his third. Wow. Cradle comes out and uh, checking in is uh, Sean Wheeler. Donald with a handoff to uh, James. Nygaard takes it to the hoop. Kind of lost it on the way up and it didn't go in. Lakeland comes away with it. All right to the basket but couldn't get it to go in was uh, Meinholz. McDonald's, a lot of control, Chris, on that attempt and uh, couldn't get it in. Cross has it right back. It's Lake a 16 point lead. Now Lakeland just trying to find something to work here. Good defense by McDonald on the cut through by Wheeler. Yep. And McDonald again steps in. Good call. Call is going to go on Meinholz, his fourth. Meinholz for uh, eight rebounds along with those four fouls. He's been active when he's been in there, that's for sure. He's uh, a good player. I got him for, uh, let's see here, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points. And he's made uh, five out of seven free throws. Nine points, actually. We 
We mentioned this earlier, but I'll mention it again. We're going to be out here on November 22nd. That's Tuesday. Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yep, next Tuesday. MSOE coming in to play Lakeland. That should uh, be an interesting game. And then we'll be out here one more time when UW Sheboygan comes out here on December 5th to play uh, the Lakeland JV team. But, uh, that's, I think, is that uh, Tom Desitel night? I don't know. You said that it was going to be. You know more than me. I do. That's a news to me. I think the brains of this operation is out in the truck. Her name is Alicia Santana. <laughs> <laughs> Helping Scott. Seven thirty left in the ball game. Lakeland up sixteen. Uh, pardon me, Lacrosse up sixteen. That'll be Lakeland's next game too. They have a couple days off. They don't play this weekend. Oh, shot off the glass is no good, but it was partially blocked. McDonald a little bit of force that time. Little pick and roll action. Good block that time by Nygaard. That's got to be finished. Preventing uh, Fritz from scoring. Fritz had six quick points and uh, has only gotten one basket since. Yeah, he's got to. And he picks up a foul. He's got to get. Uh, Fritz has got to make that one. When you're playing in the big oh, league. Yeah, but when you get it blocked, I mean, what are you going to do? Hoist it up a little higher. Yep. No surprise, Fritz had those two fouls in that first half when he played five minutes. Brandon James finally with an opportunity to score here in the second half, and he missed his free throw. He had two for two in the first half. Looking to uh, pick up his 17th point of the night, and he couldn't do it. Oh, man. Go had it on top, and then uh, I think they're going to get uh, McDonald on a uh, body action type foul. Yep, just a size differential between him and Stradle. And uh, if my counting is right, and it is, that's his fourth. Stradle's been a frequent visitor to the free throw line tonight, Chris. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This will be his 14th free throw right here. He's made 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. Take that every night. Here, really. 12, 12 free points at the free throw line. You didn't even have to make a basket. All you had to do is get fouled. A little pick and roll action, but uh, reading it well was... Uh, Brandon Manning making the interception. Cutting through is Manning, and he picks up the foul, and uh, Nygaard got hit where you don't want to get hit. Bending over at the waist. One thing lacrosse does very well is they attack, Marty. They attack quickly yep. to the lane and strong to the basket. Ball hooper, you're, you're, you're either going to be solid in position to score, or you're going to get fouled. You know, it's not like trying to dipsy do anything. They are strong to the basket. You know, the other thing is they have pretty good basketball sense in that they know when to make those cuts through the lane. Now they returned, what, uh, 14 returning players, lost four from a year ago, three starters, obviously. Devin Yerk is here tonight. McNeil. To the basket and scores. Uh, I didn't see him. Yep, he's over in the corner and the next to Coach okay. Worth. All right. Dave Gannetti over there. Wheeler down the lane. Blocked by James. Whoa. Oh. And McDonald tried to get it over to uh, McNeil, but uh, 
ball is kicked away. Wow. Brandon James just hasn't been the same player, Marty. No, he's uh, had a rough goal of it here in the second half. Well, he just doesn't get many touches. I think the style of play was a little different in the first half, Chris. Service with a couple of good moves in the lane, got the shot up and put it in. His first basket of the night. I wish high school players would be more strong with that move you know, without picking up that pivot foot, Marty. You know, when I said about a different style of game, what I meant was James did a lot of one-on-one -on -one business in the first half and it just hasn't uh, been the same. Huh. Well, I think Pat McDonald talked himself into that situation. Fatal with his fourth foul. He got to get that offensive foul by talking to the officials earlier. And this time. Yep, I agree with you. And I remember the time, too, he has said something to him. Ooh. Center's got a big butt. Neal with a pull up J, short, across with another rebound. Under five minutes left, 16 point lead for the Eagles. And a kiss off the glass is no good by Meinholz and uh, Lakeland comes away with it. One thing lacrosse isn't really is they're really, really big. They're all six, no, I, seven, I was six, looking five. At, right. They're all Got a lot of girth on him. Oh, he can't buy a hoop. Well, now he's Mitchell to... School in the game for uh, Lakeland. His first uh, action in the second half. Wheeler couldn't get it. McNeil with the rebound. He's going to shoot this one and make it. Brandon James, right down Main Street, put it up to Lacrosse Eagles and scored. And we get a timeout by Lakeland. James just one of four in the second half, but again, he didn't take a shot to about three minutes ago. You know what I noticed too? The last uh, number of trips, actually, they've uh, been up and down action. It hasn't been stopping with fouls and things right. of that nature which makes it a little more enjoyable to watch and call. Got Richard Bartson on the top camera, Sarah Balls are on the floor camera, Scott Mailoff is our director, Alicia Santana is our student helper, she's a sophomore over at South High. Lakeland going to do a little press action in the last four minutes here. Tried a little token one of these before. Lacrosse doing a great job of breaking the press, Chris. The pass well. Into the money. Turnaround jumpers up and in. That one by uh, Austin Fritz. And that's his first bat. Well, he had a basket early in the second half, too. He's got 10 points on the night. Lakeland shooting just 40% in the second half, 9 of 22. Another turnover by uh, James. Gives them 8. Soiken, what a 3. That's, uh, I got him for uh, two threes tonight, Chris. Yep, 2 of 2, 2 of 3 if I'm out there. And 12 points. McNeil over his head. Got it up there, but uh, missed everything. And uh, coming away with the rebound was Fritz. Three minutes left. Fritz with five rebounds tonight. See how they cut through quickly. Just time it right. Oh. Wheeler with the cut through, but uh, couldn't gather the pass in. McNeil off the glass, no good. But he gets the foul. He'll be at the line shooting a pair.
Falls on Clint Reen, that's his second. On the night, McNeil is uh, two for three coming into this trip to the line. Cross just 33% in the second half, Marty, but it's their free throw shooting. And yeah. They've got so many more free throws made than uh, Lakeland. We get a break in the action. I'll call him up for the second half. McNeil looking for uh, his 10th point tonight. Uh, sorry about that. Neil had 18 the other night. Off the bench. Kind of like their spark plug. Into the ball game for lacrosse is uh, Mason Denoyer. His first action. Yeah, with 225 left lacrosse is going to uh, run a little clock. So easily have got this game in hand. 17 for 19 on the second half, in the second half on their free throw shooting, Chris. Or now it's 18 out of 20. It's a fluid situation. That's 36 free throw attempts, Marty. That's a lot. <laughs> oh, man. 18 for 21. James, a little shake and bake action. Got around his man and draw, gets the foul. It's going to be on Fritz, and if it is, I've got him for four. It'll be his fifth. Brandon James back to the line. There we go. Got to get to uh, 20 points if he makes this one. Yeah. This will be his last chance to get it, Marty. Well, man, well, is he coming out? Yes, sir. No. Oh. He's going to get a chance. Maybe get a shot attempt on the next trip down. Running clock, lacrosse. Taldish McCray in the ball game has the ball. Tarek Nishaim had it before. Three ball is up and in. Long three that time by Mason DeNoyer. Another country heard from. And a substitution time. And uh, James is out. Chris, you're right. Finishes the night with a 19. 16 of those uh, were in the first half. 21 point lead too by uh, Lacrosse. Scoring pace has slowed down. You'd mentioned early on it looked like they were gonna hit 100. They're not gonna do that tonight. Kaminsky back in the ball game. Also in for lacrosse is uh, Corey Allen, number 25, seeing his first action, along with uh, Kyle Domark, number 14, and KJ Odom, number 15. Odom at the line, looking to get on the board. From Shorewood. One thirty-five left in the ball game. Come on, Odom. There we go. Nolan Wright in the ball game. He was uh, played a little bit earlier for uh, them. Colton Hawk in the game for uh, lacrosse, as is uh, Milton Cummings. Oh. Well, that's not going to earn you playing time. Dude. Nope. 
Kaminsky getting down by the basket. Shot is off the backboard, never even touched the rim. Almost stolen away. The ball handling uh, not quite as crisp as before, Chris. Because they're not warmed up, Marty. That's it. Andrew Brugink is warmed up, though. He's popped in a two-pointer. 45 seconds left in the ball game. Brugink, <laughs> you could see it from here. Give him a little shove. Back to the line will be Odom. This will be uh, free throws 18 and 19 by Odom for Lakeland in the second half. Lakeland plays nine of the first 11 games here at home before the first of January. I think it's a little tougher for him. I, you know, when I was looking at uh, constructing the schedule for us this year, I noticed that they don't have a lot of home games nope. after Not in later in the season. Nope. Oof. He did. Uh, he got away with one. Oh, but he put in the shot. Nice shot that time by Brugink. Odom almost lost the ball. Oh, if you don't know what to do with it, shoot it. Kyle Domark. A three ball. Ill-advised foul. Going to the line will be Nolan Wright. He'll have two chances to uh, put some points on the board. They're at 80 percent. Marty's gonna have to probably hit them both to stay over that mark. That's not gonna do it. Ooh, you are working hard, Mr. Wright. In lacrosse, they're calling you a scoundrel. <laughs> and your knees. That's well, look better. Kaminsky with a board. Mark that on your sheet, Chris. Eight seconds left. Are we gonna pass the ball? Hold the ball, just hold the ball. And that's going to be the ball game. Chris wants me to wrap it up, so I will. Final score, lacrosse 86, Lakeland 66. I mentioned it several times. I'll mention it one last time. We'll be back out here on November 17th. That's uh, next Tuesday. We look forward to doing that ball game for all of you fans. And uh, for the crew and my partner, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road. We're at the Wilson Gym on the campus of Lakeland University where tonight the Muskies take on UW Lacrosse. Hello everybody, alongside the coach Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin. Uh, Chris, Lakeland comes in 0-1, they lost to uh, Northland uh, College 85-79 and uh, what was a pretty good ball game. Lacrosse comes in with an exhibition loss at Bradley which is to be expected. But uh, it's always tough when a school the size of Lakeland has to play a UW lacrosse type school. We saw that in football when they had to play Platteville. Yeah, and for uh, lacrosse, they're the defending uh, Wyack champs. Uh, not a traditional basketball uh, power. They haven't won a basketball championship since 1965. Settle down. That's my alma mater you're talking about. And then they go out and win the league last year. Uh, somewhat surprised. It was a very close league last year. So they're the defending champs uh, coming in uh, this year. They're uh, picked for second in their league behind Oshkosh. For Lakeland, they're picked sixth in their league. And, 
You know, they have a team in their league, Benedictine, which is really good. They uh, went all the way to the uh, Division Three championship last year. So, you know, Lakeland doesn't play in a slouch conference, but lacrosse was a really tough opponent last year. I noticed when I was doing my uh, research this afternoon that they had four players on the team last year that were all conference. One of them, Devin Yurk from uh, Sheboygan North, he's no longer on the team. He's getting, got a real job now. <laughs> yeah, and, and it would have been nice to see Devin again. He, he kind of was hesitant about going to college and playing and then went to lacrosse. And like I said, to lead him to a conference championship, he got, like you mentioned, uh, honorable mention, uh, or, or excuse me, all-conference recognition. I believe he's doing some coaching in town. I've heard rumors about that. So we'll see if we can see Devin in the future. We're still going to have a Sheboygan North connection tonight, only it's going to be on the Lakeland side. Tell us a little bit about that, Chris. Yeah, big Sam Kaminsky's out here playing, and that's nice. You know, we were at the center a couple weeks ago. We saw some of Coach Tessitel's players over there. Now we come out here to Lakeland and we see Sam. And maybe next week, because I know a little preview, we're going to be coming out here. The uh, Lakeland JV is going to play out in the center. Maybe Sam will get that time. Sam only got three minutes the other day, but he's a freshman, you know, trying to get, you know, what's going on there. And it was a tough game for Lakeland the other day. They played a three-point shooting team, and they gave up 50 points and 10 of 12 threes, I think, in the first half. Strapped their way back to, like you said, which is a good ball game, but, but a loss was a loss. So they're hoping to turn the tide here. Coach Anitson has had pretty good success here over the years. Uh, they've uh, remained competitive, and uh, you got to give Coach credit for that. Yeah, they have, and again, last year, too, we talk about, you know, it's always tough, these games. Last year, they went over to lacrosse. They didn't win the game, but they hung right with them, and, and if, if lacrosse ended up being the conference champ last year, you know what kind of team Lakeland has here. So, uh, interested to see what Lakeland has here. It's been a few years since we've been out here, but I always like coming out here and seeing what the program has. Anderson's in his ninth year. Coach Cable for lacrosse is in his 14th year. He's also had a lot of success, as, as you've mentioned. Uh, we're going to step out, and we come back. We'll have the starting lineups and a tip-off for tonight's game. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who once took care of you. Sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire, and that could be scary. Only you can prevent wildfires. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. take the uh, starting lineups from the uh, floor announcer as he announces them to us. Uh, you'll get those uh, starters. Sam Skoyan was at the first starter and uh, Clint Reen Also in the starting lineup is uh, number 23, Ben Meinholz, and number 25, Zach Schradel. And rounding out the uh, starting lineup for lacrosse, number 34, Austin Fritz.
And there you see coach uh, Ken Cable, the lacrosse uh, head man. Like we mentioned in the opening, he's in his 14th year. Starting for Lakeland is uh, number two, Mark Chris Kavich. Also starting for the Muskies, number four, Brandon James. Number 11, Pat McDonald in the starting lineup. Number 34, Eric Nygaard. And rounding out the starting five, number 42, Jacob Service. Service from Coon Valley, Chris. Lost his way. I heard he was heading to lacrosse and then uh, got on the wrong road and <laughs> ended up at Lakeland. Yeah, yeah. The officials for tonight are Joe Thiessen from Madison and, Aaron, and Darren Brudon and James Wilburn. Those two gentlemen are from uh, the Milwaukee area. Yeah, it's quite a trip for uh, the lacrosse team to come over on a Thursday night, school night. Like we mentioned, Lakeland comes in 0-1. They lost to uh, Northland College. This is the uh, first regular season game for uh, the lacrosse Eagles. They had a warm-up type game, an exhibition game at uh, Bradley. Lost that one, uh, 83 to 66. Uh, kept it reasonable, Chris. Yep. Cross controls the tip. Lakeland in a man-to-man -man defense. Bounce feet inside, but uh, good defense played. And then uh, hitting the uh, short jumper from the wing was Austin Fritz. Fritz, one of their all-conference returners, Marty, number 34. Okay. Lacrosse also playing a man-to-man -man defense. Jump shot from inside the top of the key is good by Pat McDonald. McDonald, sophomore from Port Washington. 15 points the other night for McDonald. You know, size-wise, uh, lacrosse isn't that much bigger. A good skip pass, but Lakeland failed to get the uh, defensive rebound, and lacrosse has it right back. And uh, they get a foul down underneath. It's going to go on Lakeland. I will say this. It seems that uh, lacrosse is a little quicker. You know, they rotate, dribble drive, Lakeland counters, and then there seems to be always somebody open under the basket for lacrosse like that. A good feed inside to uh, Ben Meinholz, who uh, puts in the dunk. Lakeland scrambling on the lacrosse, the scrambling on the defense. Lakeland trying to keep the possession. Good little scoop shot up and in by Brandon James. With 18-20 left, we're tied at four. James almost ran out of real estate there, but used the glass nice, Marty. For a short guy, he had long arms on that shot. Cradle, number 25, uh, gave the nice pass to his teammate, Meinholz, on the last possession, and there he picks up a foul. Foul goes on uh, Chris Kavich, and that's his second. He's coming out of the ball game. Well, that's that speed again, Marty. They just seem a little bit quicker to the basket. Will dump down inside. The ball is knocked away. It goes off the lacrosse player. Schradle and uh, Lakeland will get it. Good defense played underneath. I believe that was D 
Deontay Carlton that knocked the ball away. Carlton played at Green Bay East. McDonald's going to pick up the uh, offensive foul, setting the screen on the exchange with his teammate, and that's three personals on uh, Lakeland, none on the uh, Lacrosse Eagles. A little spin move in the lane and putting it up and in was Austin Fritz. That's his second basket. 6-7, senior from New Berlin. He's got a nice move there, using his body and positioning well. And they're going to get a blocking foul. That's going to go on Clint Reen. Carlton's going to toss it in for the Muskies. Jump shot from the side is up and in by Brandon James. He's got four points. We're tied at six. Lakeland three for three. Good feet inside. And uh, good gathering into the ball and putting it up and in by Sam Skoyan. Well, he had nowhere to go. That was no, a tough shot. Kind of slipped and fell, too. And I think it's going to be uh, Skoyan picking up the foul, Chris, on the drive. Well, I like Lakeland's thought process of going right to the basket. They're not settling for outside shots. As I mentioned before, it looks like they match up size-wise with them. But uh, Lakeland, or excuse me, lacrosse seems to have a little more speed, as I mentioned before. Are they come off their brakes a little bit quicker? Do the little things to get open on offense. Yeah, a little sharper on the offense, you're right. One for two trip for McDonald makes it eight to seven. 16.50 left in the first half. Lakeland continues in the man-to-man -man defense. Jump shot from on top is up and in. That one was made by uh, Fritz again. He's got six points. Both teams combined eight of nine shooting, Marty. That yeah, ball is kicked out of bounds. <clears throat> if Scott Maloff's our director tonight, Richard Bartson running the top camera, Sarah Balzer's on the uh, floor camera, Alicia Sant. Alicia Santana is our student helper. She's a sophomore over at South High. I'll throw out a thank you to uh, Alicia for uh, writing the names down on the score sheet. I did one, she did one. And a steal by Lacrosse. And ball is knocked away, no foul called. Good defense by the Muskies. Turnover by Lacrosse. Deep three attempt is uh, no good and uh, knocked out of bounds by Lacrosse. Lakeland will keep it. James was feeling it, Chris. <laughs> that was pretty deep. Way deep. Just as I mentioned, they're getting such good shots. Trying to feed it in to uh, Nygaard, but uh, picking up the foul was uh, Austin Fritz. That'll be his first foul. Eric Nygaard, number 34. He's a Plymouth graduate, junior. Team fouls all tied up at three. And quite a few fouls, Marty. McDonald trying to get in, but uh, Pretty good defense played by Lacrosse. Yeah, out of the inbound, they went to the zone this time. Nope, now it looks We're like seeing some of that quickness on the defensive side, too. Oh, good spin move, but uh, not able to finish was James. And we get a whistle underneath the basket. Moving kind of slow is uh, Zach Schradel. Looks like he got fouled. I think they got Carlton, Marty. Okay, Carlton on the foul. 15-26, we got seven fouls. Hey, uh, 
Yeah, that's a lot right, right there. You know, it seems earlier in the year they try to call out more contact as the year goes by, uh, you know. Not being able to hit the jump shot was uh, Meinholz, and then the uh, tip attempt by Schradel was a foul over the back. Schradel's got a foul. It's his first. Yeah, we got eight fouls. We're not even a quarter of the way in. For the first half. <laughs> <laughs> Jump shot from inside the half circle is no good, but James comes away with the rebound. And stolen away by uh, Lacrosse. Their turnover ready for Lakeland. The jump shot in the lane is no good by uh, Lacrosse's Sam Soyan. Skoyan. And we're gonna get a charge. James a little too aggressive, picks up his first foul. I hope you didn't have plans for after the game. <laughs> James had the turnover bugaboo the other day. That's three already here. He had oh boy. three the other night, too. But the team only had 11 the other night, which isn't too bad. No, actually, you're right. That isn't. Well, crossover dribble and the jump shot is uh, blocked, but uh, getting the rebound lacrosse with another offensive rebound, and then they clear it out, feed it in, and off the glass, and good by Kenny Finkel. And another charge. Michael School this time, I think, Marty. Yeah, I think you're right. So that hand go up with the five fingers. Six foul on Lakeland. Next foul puts uh, Lacrosse in the bonus. The skip pass. The passing up the three point attempt was Brooks. Spin move. And the shot is no good by Schradel. He'll be going to the line to shoot a pair. Just attacked one on one there. Chris, I think if that basket would have went in, he wouldn't have called the foul. I think he was waiting to see what happened. Missed the first one there, Marty. Yeah. Between the two squads, they're one for three at the free throw line. Last year, lacrosse was 74% from the free throw line. As a team, that's uh, quite good. Making the second one was uh, Zach Schradel. It's now 13 to seven. Lakeland slowly but surely Starting to drop behind, Chris. They need a couple of baskets here. Yeah, well, the turnovers have cost them those offensive fouls. They took that long three. That's more like it. Services shot is uh, off, no good. I like that shot a lot better, though, Marty. Yeah. And a feed inside by uh, Wheeler goes out of bounds. It did not have a good angle for that pass. Would have been better served to... Uh, Throw it back outside. Third turnover on. Brendan Manning checks in for uh, the Eagles and stolen away by Lacrosse. Oh, oh my. Good block that time. And then Lacrosse gets it back and draws the foul. Oh my. I didn't, didn't see who got the block, Chris, but. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, well, I thought he got body first and then the block. Well, we didn't see that. <laughs> Manning just in the ball game is gonna be at the line shooting a couple of free throws. The foul went on service.
Manning put in a pair. Makes it 15 to 7. Good feet inside to service. His spin move couldn't get it, and then they're going to get a foul. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Picking up the foul for uh, lacrosse is uh, Austin Fritz, and that's going to be his second. Wow. That's a. <laughs> I thought that was great defense. First one to throw it out, and then yep. when the whistle blew, I thought it was going to be a three second yep. call. Yep, so did I. James wanted to get the shot off, but the recovering was uh, Kenny Finkel. And there, James makes one. It's a two pointer. James had 25 the other night. He's got six tonight. And a three pointer that time goes in for Lacrosse's Tanner Brooks and a timeout. Oh, Chris, I got that as the first three pointer of the night. Or no, is it, was there another one? I do not have one. Yeah, I don't either. I got all twos for uh, Lacrosse till Brooks hit that three. And uh, Lakeland, I got for nine points, and all on twos and a free throw. Well, we're at 12:42, and there you see it. 13 fouls up there. That's yeah. a lot of fouls. Yep. And uh, so far, it looks like Lakeland just needs to do a better job of uh, handling the ball. They've uh, got quite a few turnovers. Yes, they do. They got a half a dozen already. Well, and at this pace, that's going to be over 24th turnovers because we're not even halfway through the first half. we got to clean that part up. And you had mentioned against uh, Northland College, they only had 11 for the ball game. So they're going to have to uh, do a little better in that regard. Cross shooting 53%, Marty. So a good start on offense again for the opponent in this gym. Northland the other day had that 50 point halftime lead, hit 10 threes. Only ended up with 12 of the game, but boy, when you get, you're that hot. Then you gotta go in at halftime, talk about how we defend the three, next thing you know, you're leaving the lane open. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? <laughs> Bringing it up is Pat McDonald. Now McDonald, both teams staying in that man-to-man -man defense. McDonald yeah. got around his uh, defender, Tanner Brooks, and uh, Brooks commits the foul. Cross is probably thinking we played that D1 team the other day that was physical and bigger and stronger and, and banged around. Now <laughs> we got to play Lakeland, and uh, they're calling everything. Hard time getting it in against the uh, cross defense, but uh, now they do, and they're in their offense. Uh, couldn't quite make the save. Joshua and McNeil was not a very good pass no. by James. You almost no. have to give him the turnover, don't I you I did. Think? Yep, it was way too low. Tried to force that pass in there. What was he going to do with it if he even caught it there? I mean, it was a bounce pass to, to a wing. Yeah, and he's going away from the basket Correct. to try and get it. There That's you go. Thing. That's a little give and go action. Nets Brandon Manning a basket. He has four points on the night. That's 20 to 9. Very workmanlike by lacrosse, Marty. You said it's been a slow taking the lead away, and that's kind of just how it's been. A lot of bumping and banging by uh, service. And uh, number 32, Tanner Brooks, and uh, we get a whistle, and uh, Brooks is the guy to get the foul. I got that as his second foul. Service is going to be at the line to shoot the one and one. Line drive free throws in. Chris Kavich. Service. That, Joshua McNeil. Pat McDonald. 
And uh, Brandon James on the floor for the Muskies. He didn't shoot any free throws the other night. One for two trip. Eleven thirty left in the first half. Ball is uh, tipped out of bounds. Good hands by James. Checking back in is uh, Eric Nygaard. And service goes out. Look at this, four on one side, Marty. Yeah, it looks like a zone defense, too. But uh, putting it on in up and in underneath was Zach Schradel on a nice shot. A dish inside, the ball is tipped away by from uh, McNeil, but uh, picking up the foul is... Uh, Balls on Manning, his first. And both teams now are sitting with uh, fo eight fouls, Chris. This is going to be a foul fest. It already is. <laughs> We're not even halfway through. No. Halfway through the first half. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the other thing that's disturbing is we're not even halfway and uh, 22 points for the cross already. Yeah, they're uh, they're on their way to 100. Looks like it. I agree. Another one for two trip by uh, the Muskies. They've got six free throw attempts and they've only made three. McNeil with a reach. Not good defense there. Well, they're all trying to stop their opponents with their body or their arms, Marty. Well, as opposed to their body, you got to get in front. Then uh, maybe give you a little benefit with your body. But when you got your arms up and your hands at the ball, they're going to call that. You're right. Especially if you hit them. <laughs> <laughs> Any shot is no good. McNeil gets away with an over the back. But uh, he tipped it out of bounds. It's going to stay down at that end. Lacrosse will uh, put it in play at their end of the court. 22 to 11. Lakeland continues in the man to man defense. Short jumper is up and good by Schradel. He looked pretty good on that shot, Chris. He's got five points on the night. Squared himself to the basket. Donald with a fadeaway. It looked like he sounded like he got slapped. No call. Cross has it back. And a little too much dribbling. I don't know what you think, Chris. And that's what he deserves. Yep. Meinholz. Trying to show the world he can dribble. And James with a three. He's got nine points. Lakeland needs a little run here. You gotta start on this end because the cross has looked really good out here. Good ball movement, three ball attempt was no good by uh, Skoyan. McDonald from 12, no good. The cross comes away with it. And good step in defense by James and Lakeland takes it away again. Not crisp with the ball all of a sudden as the Eagles. No, it's like each guy is trying to do too much instead of playing team ball. Brandon James to the basket. Couldn't get it in. <laughs> he took a swipe at the ball and missed the lacrosse player and the ball. No call. But it was close. And uh, now the Eagles call a timeout. Coach Cable recognizes they are not playing the same kind of basketball they were early on, Chris. It's a 30 second timeout, Scott, so we better keep it here. Well, this is a good learning game. It's still early in the season, a couple exhibition games before conference play starts. So you want to get things figured out. You also got new players, Marty. You know, you get new people coming in and stuff. You want to know how they're going to contribute throughout the year. And these are the type of games you want to do that in. 
Obviously, each team wants to win the basketball game, but uh, a chance for you to see what, what kind of team you're, you have. And uh, we both kind of talked about it. You look at both benches, there's a lot of kids on both teams. Uh, Richard was counting them up, and uh, he had I had lacrosse at 17 players out there, and Richard had uh, Lakeland at 18. So there is a lot of bodies on the court. Green has it on top. Nice. Good feed. Uh, reverse layup is no good by uh, Manning. Had a pretty good look at it, too. Brandon James. A little shake and bake. Good defense by Reen to help out. Forced a kick out, but then making the three-point attempt was Eric Nygaard. Nygaard hit a three the other day. Eight points. Nygaard has nine now in the ball game. Kick out, three-point attempt is uh, no good by uh, Manning. Lacrosse has it back, down seven. Good feet inside to McNeil, his jump shot is no good. Shot was blocked and then he came down with the ball. I think they're gonna get him for a travel or is it a foul call? Uh, all the officials looked at each other and they decided to... Uh... Yeah, we missed that one, let's give it back to Lakeland. I think it was a jump. Okay, maybe that's what it was. Held ball. Right. And uh, Lakeland did control the opening tap, so that would be right. Committing the foul was uh, Meinholz. Got uh, James on the arm. Brandon will be going at the line shooting a pair. He hit both, all six of his free throws the other night. And this is a nice little run that you needed by the fish to get back in it. Lacrosse who looked so sharp the last few trips. Not doing the same things and not finishing. Isn't it amazing how that goes? You know, you're playing like a team, you're making a couple shots, everything's going good, and all of a sudden, you, you know, things just go south. You're just not playing the same. Some fresh bodies in here for lacrosse as well. James with a two for two trip. He has 11 points. 11 of the 19. Oh, that should have been an easy basket for lacrosse. Yeah. Lucky they saved it from going out of bounds. Wheeler just didn't seem ready. Turnaround jumper in the lane is no good. That attempt was by Finko. The other thing that makes you look like a good basketball team is when the ball's going in the basket. Yep. Oh, it's down to Good hands by Meinholz, but Lacrosse couldn't gather it in. And McNeil drives to the hoop and scores. Nice driving shot by uh, Joshua. He's one for three. Comes from Chicago. Paulvish McCray, number 15 in the ball game for uh, Lacrosse, but making the basket was Sean Wheeler. A lot of people scoring tonight. Yep, 26-21, Lakeland only down five. Eight different uh, Eagles have scored. Lakeland uh, working the ball around nicely, stolen away. McCray lays it off the glass and in. That was a costly mistake by uh, Brandon James. Well, they picked his pocket, Chris. That was a nice steal. Well, Scott, we have a full timeout, so we can take a short break. We'll be right back. Lakeland uh, trailing at 
To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Are we going to get turned on? <laughs> How many starts do I get? <laughs> Back at uh, Wilson Gym. Until you get it right, Marty. There's uh, Coach Annenson uh, talking to the troops, telling them to keep playing good. You get a look at some of the uh, student body. Uh, nine turnovers, Marty, that have led to uh, easy baskets for lacrosse. And right now, that's basically the difference of the game. They've given up about three easy layups due to the fact of those turnovers. As I mentioned, the Open's been a few years since we've been out here. It's, I always like coming out here. Actually, I just like doing basketball games, Marty, with you. I hear you. I, I like doing them with you too, Chris, really. <laughs> <laughs> We're a good team. I guess we must like working with each other. We've been doing it for almost 20 years. Yep. <laughs> Brandon James with a nice jump shot, and he's got three more. So you're saying some of these kids weren't even born yet, Marty? <laughs> yeah, really. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Muskies within four points now. Six minutes left in the first half. And oh, oh boy. A grab is called. That fall is going to go on uh, Chris Gavich. And if it is, that's his third. Well, he got those two early. And uh, now he's got. Three fouls. Double bonus now for uh, the Lacrosse Eagles. That'll be the end of the half for uh, Chris Gavich with his uh, three fouls. And he was the third leading scorer the other night. And he hasn't played a lot of minutes tonight because of the foul trouble. 30 to 24. Neal has it on top, being guarded by uh, Wheeler. James with a fadeaway, couldn't get it in, but hustling in was McDonald to get the offensive rebound in the middle of the lane. And then McCray with another steal. Nice. Reverse layup is good, and he's fouled. That was nice. But another turnover, Marty. Too many turnovers. Well, you mentioned right from the start, Chris, uh, lacrosse is quick, and they showed it a lot on offense at the beginning, and now they're uh, showing it on defense. Well, Lakeland's got 15 shots, Marty, and 10 turnovers. Ooh, that's just, not a good... Uh, no. The other thing is they're not getting offensive rebounds, so you get one and out, so when you add turnovers to that, it's just... Less opportunities to score. Now that leads back to nine. McCray with uh, five points since he came in about uh, three or four minutes ago. So he's having a good run. McDonald going down the lane, off the glass and in. I was just wondering why he wasn't going to use the screen. I guess he didn't need it. No, it's blew right by the guy. Lakeland uh, switching the uh, screens out on top. There's a kick out pass. McCray couldn't get the jump shot to go. Inside shot is no good. Dunk attempt is no good. Wheeler scores. Boy, went right through him to get it too. Yeah, too many offensive attempts. And service called for the walk. Another turnover. Coming in is uh, Sam Kaminsky. Sam uh, played at North last year. He's a freshman. Got three minutes in uh, their first game against Northland College. Of course, Sam's team made it to the state, state tournament, final four. Yep. Kaminsky, oh, James with a steal. He's gonna take it in hard. Shot rolls in. I thought it was partially blocked, but he got it to go. 16 points for James. 
16 out of the 28. Walk. And walk by Wheeler. Seven turnovers now on the cross. See if they take advantage of Big Sam's height here. Dante Carlton's in two, number one. Talked about him a little bit. He's from Green Bay East. I'll tell you, he was a really good player in the Valley and a really good player in the Bay last year. Missed that one. Yeah, he had a good look, too, and just couldn't get it to roll in. Inside feed to Schradle. He kicks it out to McCray. He's nice save to Manning, but then Lakeland comes away with it. And stolen away again. Good lead feed. Oh. Meinholz had the shot, but was undercut and goes down hard. He looks uh, to be okay, but he'll be shooting a pair. Foul goes on uh, Carlton. For Carlton, that's his second, Smarty. Lots of fouls, lots of turnovers for Lakeland. Yep and uh, way too many free throws for the Eagles. This is gonna be attempt uh, nine and 10. Seven of nine have been uh, made. Whoa. And coming away with the board for the Muskies was Nygaard. His fifth. McDonald probing, but uh, couldn't get inside. Kaminsky has it on top. Not where you want a 6'8 player. No, I'd like to get him down a little closer. Sam fighting, fighting to get position. Oh, great block that time. By Lacrosse's Meinholz, Ben Meinholz on the block. Meinholz from Oconomowoc, went to uh, Marquette High School. Kaminsky is guarding Meinholz out on the wing. And uh, we had a whistle underneath. I'm gonna call that a positioning foul there. Gradle. Riedel. Dante Carlton oh. finding out that uh, college ball is a little three, tougher. A little tougher. Wow. Well, Lakeland is not short of substitutes. <laughs> <laughs> but we still don't want guys falling out. A good inside feed to Sam, and he able to uh, handle it, but then he lost it. And lacrosse comes away with it. Shot is no good. We're going to get a foul. I think that's going to be on Eric Nygaard, Chris. Well, the idea was right by Sam there. Just a old veteran wise move there against him. At the line for the Eagles is uh, Sam Skoyan. It's his third point. He had a basket early on. And uh, Lakeland got it to 28 to 24, Chris. They're now down nine, could be 10. So uh, lacrosse has bounced back a little bit from their uh, sloppy play. Donald got stopped, was able to get it out to uh, Brandon James. James Brandon. Shot is no good. And uh, Lacrosse comes away with it again, Chris. Drive down the lane is up and in by Manning. Wow. His prayer was answered. 
Not a very good shot. Under two minutes left in the half. And all of a sudden, it's a dozen, Marty. Stoswich in the ball game for the Muskies, his first uh, action. Shot is no good, and uh, rebound, it goes, rebound goes to uh, Finkel. Kiss off the glass is no good. Skoyan, pardon me, that was uh, Campos with the rebound. Meinholz taking a long kiss off the glass. You know, he used to shoot those kind of shots. Fritch. Yep, we talked about that last night, actually. The art of shooting off the backboard is gone. Do you ever watch games where people use the backboard anymore? No, you're right. He's, uh, that's too bad. Just don't use that backboard enough anymore. Eric Nesheim in for the first time for lacrosse. Also checking back in is uh, Sean Wheeler. Campos puts in a couple, Chris. It's 40 to 30. Freshman from Janesville, Craig. Shot clock hasn't been much of an issue, Chris. And we're going to get a blocking foul. A late call. Campos is going to pick up the foul. And uh, I think it's going to be Wheeler at the line. There you see it. Ooh. Oh, you see the arm come out oh, by yeah. Wheeler? Get out of my way. But uh, they didn't call it that way. Too bad. A couple more free throws for uh, lacrosse. Wheeler's got five points now. He's uh, looked pretty good since coming in the ball game. Also back in is uh, McCray. He's been pretty dynamic for uh, the Eagles. Down to a minute left in the first half, 41 to 30. Brandon James had it. Uh, running that weave on the top. Get it to their guy, James. McCray and James is a good matchup. Nygaard shot off the glass is in. His first points of the night. Seven second difference on the shot clock to the play clock, Marty. Checking in the ball game when we weren't looking was uh, Nolan Wright, number 30 for lacrosse, his first action. Wheeler. Hard to the basket and scores. Shot clock off, 15 seconds left in the first half. It's 43-32. Lacrosse on top. Coach Anninson uh, yelling at the troops. McDonald with a three-point attempt is no good. Oh, late foul is gonna be called on Lakeland's Ben Stoshwich. That hurts, Chris. Just under a Second left and a chance for the Indians to, excuse me, the Indians. They haven't been the Indians for a long time, I'm <laughs> sorry. since I was there. <laughs> uh, the Eagles for, uh, the Eagles for uh, two more points. You have been banned for the next week and a half from the uh, casinos. Ah, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't call them the Marquette Warriors yet, so. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to call them the Warriors when they got that maroon and white on. Lakeland, maybe. <laughs> Campos' shot is off. No good. It would have been, wouldn't have counted anyway. It was late. And we're at halftime here at the Wilson Gym on campus of Lakeland University where uh, lacrosse leads it 44-32. Thomas, you got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising it. It just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon too. 
and who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good. What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma, too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Yeah, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son! It's always worth it. Whoa! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Hey, look, it's those guys. Hey. Get some drinks. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. 